What is going on everybody? I'm Jiffy Nano and in this video I'm going to showcase a flak build that can melt bosses and finish the mayhem before takedown. Now if you want to see more builds, guides, and other shooter looter related stuff, be sure to subscribe and click that bell because I plan on covering a handful of games this year and you won't want to miss anything. So, flak. I'll be honest, I don't enjoy flak. I don't know what it is, but I do not mesh with the way that you have to play him at all. So making this build without DLC, super rare gear like the x25 stagecoach, or a bunch of god roll anointments was pretty challenging for me. In my opinion, Flak is the hardest character to play right now in Mayhem 4, and with, a, with the base game lacking in weapons, with serious single-shot firepower like the Nukem or the IM Cannon, a lot of encounters can be really damn hard. Some of you may just be better at Flak than me, but I will say, with Flak, in Mayhem 4, the takedown was not easy, and required some skill and practice, at least for me. Maybe as I play Flak more, things will become easier, we shall see, but with this build, the most important thing you need to get down is the routine of using Fadeaway to get your shield back, making the most of your three shots, then using the Brainstormer to get your Fadeaway back as fast as possible. So again, this was not easy, and it absolutely kicked my ass. In Mayhem 3 and below, it wasn't all that difficult at all, so go through May for Mayhem 3, because Mayhem 4, for me, was a damn nightmare. As per usual, there will be a segment near the end going over DLC gear recommendations for those with a DLC. So, the skill overview. We are going all the way down the Hunter skill tree for Megavore and going down the Stalker tree for Hidden Machine. Also, I do apologize for the quality of my skill graphics being worse than in the past. The skill trees on the Borderlands website were removed, so the super clean icon and explanations I could get from there are no longer available. The action skill we're using is Fade Away. This gives you 15 seconds of invisibility and 3 shots during that invisibility that are automatically critical hits. The augments we're taking are Not My Circus, which makes your pet taunt nearby enemies after you come out of Fade Away, and Unblinking Eye, which stacks 75% bonus critical damage on each hit, resetting every three hits. What's interesting about Unblinking Eye is this counts for each individual pellet and multi-pellet weapons like shotguns and mashers, so weapons like this can stack Unblinking Eye multiple times, so the more pellets the better. And our pet is going to be the Spider Ant Scorcher, because it's the tankiest and 10% elemental damage is better than damage reduction. Alright, so the Hunter Tree first. Three points into Leave No Trace. When you crit, it has a chance to put a bullet back in your magazine. Five into Interplanetary Stalker. This is a kill skill that stacks three times, granting you 10% damage per stack and different bonuses based on what you're fighting. So 15% action skill damage against humans, 7.5% corrosive damage against robots, and 7% movement speed against beasts. Three into Headcount. This is probably the most important skill of the whole spec. Whenever you get a critical hit, there's a chance your action skill cooldown will be reduced. With the right setup, you can use this to make your cooldown damn near instant. 3 into Hunter's Eye. Last I heard, this skill is actually bugged and gives you half of what it says it does, so I only use it to get to the next tier. At 3, it says it grants 9% more crit damage versus humans, 24% more armor damage versus robots, and 18% damage reduction versus beasts. 5 into Two Fang. This gives you a 25% chance to fire an extra projectile when shooting. This isn't great with shotguns, because it only adds one projectile as opposed to doubling our projectiles. But with weapons like our Cutsmans that only fire one projectile each, this can double our DPS. If you're using a high pellet count weapon like a coach gun, I would put these points into Hunter's Eye and Grim Harvest instead. 3 into the most dangerous game. This is a kill skill that gives you 25% bonus gun damage, 10% critical hit damage, 33% more handling after killing a badass enemy. On Mayhem 4, there's plenty of badasses to kill, so this will be up pretty often, and it lasts 2 minutes base, so you have plenty of time to proc it again. 3 into a big game. This increases your hunter's skill effects by 30% and doubles their duration, so the most dangerous game becomes a 4 minute skill, opposed to a 2 minute skill. 1 into Galactic Shadow, 15% more critical damage and enemies are less likely to target you. And lastly, Megavore, you have a 20% chance to crit on a non-crit area when dealing gun damage. This skill in combination with Headhunter and the Brainstormer is what can bring your action skill back damn near instantly. So, on to the Stalker Tree. 5 points into Furious Attack, which grants you up to 20% gun damage and 48% handling from shooting enemies. 5 into Self Repairing System, which grants 30% max health and 1.5% health regen. 2 into All My BFFs, which shares 33% of your healing to allies and 66 to your pet. This helps keep your pet alive, so it can revive you with Lick the Wounds. One point in here makes it so your pet can revive you if you go down. Three points into turn tail and run. When moving, you get a 17% damage reduction and 0.95% health regen per second. But while standing still, you get 25% gun damage and 12% fire rate. Five points into hidden machine, which grants you 30% bonus gun damage against enemies not targeting you. So when you're in fadeaway and hopefully when your pet is taking the brunt of the damage, and I put the last three points into Persistent Hunter in the Master Tree for the 45% action skill duration. 
More action skill duration makes it easier for your shield to come back because the shield is your main way of staying alive. Speaking of our shield, let's go on to the gear. We are using a Bounty Hunter class mod, which grants you 3% chance to activate your hunter kill skills just by shooting enemies, and bosses count as human, robot, and beasts. You can also use the Cosmic Stalker, which makes your hunter skills 25% more effective. For the gameplay in the background, I use nothing but the Bounty Hunter. I know the Cosmic Stalker is good and especially better in mobbing situations, but against bosses, the Bounty Hunter is definitely better. We are using a stopgap shield and a last stand artifact. Any artifact with the last stand prefix works for Mayhem 3 and below, but for Mayhem 4, you definitely want a last stand auto idle for the healing on kill. As for the stopgap, you want as short of a delay in recharge time as possible. Both of these items give you 5 seconds of invincibility. The stopgap grants it on shield break and resets on shield refill, so the faster you get your shield back, the better. The last stand grants it when you're at 50% HP, but has a 40 second cooldown, so you want to rely on the shield more. For our grenade, we have the Hunter Seeker. The Hunter Seeker homes into enemies, shooting them with bullets. These bullets can crit, activating Leave No Trace, Head Count, and your Bounty Hunter class mod. For our weapons, you want two Brainstormers. The first one at max level with the best anoint you can find, the second one you want as low of a level as you can get. Without joining a friend's game as a level 1, the lowest possible you can get is a level 22, which is perfect. These are for getting your action skill back as fast as possible. With Megavore, the lightning chains can crit, for each tick of damage critting it can proc headcount, and in some cases you make your cooldown damn near instant. The low level brainstormer is for the Wotan fight. The damage you deal doesn't matter since you only need crits for headcount to work. Using a low level brainstormer ensures that you don't kill any of the mobs in the area, so you always have a group of enemies to get your action skill back from. Aside from that, we have the basics. A couple of cutsmans. I used Corrosive and Shock for the bosses, and I also used a Corrosive Dictator for Wotan's flying ahead. Trying to hit the flying half with the cutsman is a giant pain, and the Maggie was a bit slow. And even though we're only using the three-shot fadeaway, the Dictator was doing some serious work with the bipod out. And last, you want some kind of multi-pellet weapon. I used a Maggie since it has a rather large mag, and I can spam it. It's also easier to find than the all-around best weapon, which is a purple Jacob's coach gun. The coach gun is a double barrel shotgun that can roll with up to 25 pellets, which is a lot of ricochets when hitting crits and fadeaway, so look out for purple Jacob's shotties and prioritize pellet count over raw damage. Now, if you have the DLCs, the first thing I would add is an ion cannon or a nukem. These rockets can pack some serious punch when in fadeaway, and the nukem's splash can even get through Rotan's barrier. The Craps Pistol on Sticky Mode combined with Gorillas in the Mist can also be a really fun way to kill bosses, and the Lucky 7 can be downright silly if you're willing to reroll its effects. Now if you're lucky enough to have one, the Wedding Invitation Sniper can do some insane amounts of damage in Fade Away, so if you are lucky to ha enough to have one, give that a shot too. So to play this build effectively, you have to be pretty quick when swapping from your damage dealers to your brainstormers to reset your action skill. This takes some practice and good positioning, so be careful and good luck. Hopefully this works out better for some of you than it did for me. Like I said, this just doesn't mesh with my playstyle, and I don't enjoy playing Flak very much, and this just absolutely kicked my ass. I will warn you this was a very slow way to play. Lots of running away and getting my shield back. Uh, I was on Mayhem 4, not using any, any really good anointments, and not using anything super rare, so... If you're on Mayhem 3, this shouldn't be as big a deal, but on Mayhem 4, you have to play very careful. You have to play very slow. So, yeah, good luck. So, let me know what you think of the build in the comments. I already can. I already know this is my probably my weakest build, and feel free to suggest other build ideas and let me know what I'm doing wrong on Flag, because Flag is definitely my weakest character. If you want to be part of the build process, check out my Twitch channel, link in the description. I stream Monday, Wednesday, and Friday afternoons. Hope to see you there. And if you're on PC and want to give this build a shot or just want the items on the character, my save file will be on my Discord, link also in the description. For you console players, I hope these items are easy enough to get, and good luck. If you enjoyed the video or found it informative, consider subscribing and hitting the like button. If you want to see short guides on how to get some of the gear in Borderlands 3, check out the playlist right here. And if you want to see an Amara Phase Zerker build that completely destroyed the takedown on Mayhem 4, check out that here on the left. Thanks for watching, y'all are badasses, and I'll see you guys in the next one.